hello guys welcome to doctor's fine so today we'll be continuing our pulmonary section and today we'll be discussing about pulmonary circulation as you can see here i have drawn a rough diagram of uh, the circulation where as we all know that from the left ventricle blood is pumped into the systemic circulation and from the systemic circulation blood is utilized and the it, there is gaseous and nutrients nutrients exchange and blood from the veins is drained into the right heart in the right atrium in the right atrium to right ventricle then to the back to the lungs where it gets oxygenated and from the lungs through the pulmonary vein it comes into the left atrium then to left ventricle and the cycle continues now as we all know that pulmonary artery supplies the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the alveoli as i have written here and the artery which supplies to the lungs itself as lung also utilizes or also needs oxygen and nutrients for its develop for its function we know that uh, we see here that bronchial artery which uh, comes from the descending thoracic aorta supplies the arterial blood to the bronchi the connective tissue the structure of lung stroma the visceral pleura and pulmonary lymph nodes and as we all know that the oxygenated blood goes to all of the part of the lungs so it, of course it uh, requires nutrients oxygen and so the blood after coming from all this area it is deoxygenated so from the right side here you can see the azygous vein drains it and from the left side hemizygous or left superior intercostal veins drain the blood from the lungs so here the lungs are lungs um, blood coming into these veins are deoxygenated blood but uh, there is no place where it can it gets oxygenated so it directly gets mixed into the systemic circulation it is called shunt like uh, from the lungs utilize all the oxygen and it is directly drained into systemic circulation so this is the reason that uh, many books you have seen that there are uh, oxygen saturation from the systemic circulation is not 100% it's about 97% because they have because of the physiologic shunt the deoxygenated blood which is mixed from the this azygous vein and hemizygous vein uh, the oxygenation level is reduced the saturation is reduced because of that the systemic circulation does not have 100% of saturation it consists of 97 about 97% So in many books you would have seen that there is 97%. It is because of this physiologic shunt. Now let's uh, get a brief review about shunts. Like it is, and there are two types of shunts: anatomical shunts and physiologic shunts. In anatomic shunts, or as we say, atrovenous shunts, there is direct connection between arterioles and venules. Means there are no capillary. Does not contain capillaries from the art arterioles. It directly goes into veins, venules. I mean. means no blood doesn't flow through capillaries it uh, also you get a concept from this like nutritional flow or non nutritional flow in like a resting stage person get non nutritional fl flow means from arterial it directly goes into the venules uh, now let's see a physiologic shunt like as taken the example of lung itself so connection between arterial side and venous side so circulation provided by meta arterioles it is physiologic shunts as you can see here that these are the bronchial arteries which are coming from the descending part of the aorta descending duct of the aorta yep so the descending duct of the aorta and it is oxygenated blood it goes to the lungs different part of tissue i have not drawn ev everything but i have just drawn like it is coming from the bronchial artery and lung has utilized it and Uh, as you can see, I have drawn that it is it is directly draining into this area. Let me get it darker. See this. It is directly draining here and mixing it with the oxygenated blood. So here it is the deoxygenated blood from different part of the body comes to alveoli. These are alveoli. Here it gets exchanged and the oxygenated blood. see this is oxygenated blood and this deoxygenated blood from the lungs drained by the sorry so drained by the azygous vein and hemizygous vein comes here and mixes with the oxygenated blood making 
bronchopulmonary anastomosis and goes to pulmonary vein where it goes to right left left atrium left atrium then to left ventricle uh, similarly there is shunt in like thebestian veins means uh, the veins uh, heart also have similar shunting uh, like uh, heart also requires the amount of nutrients oxygen and all and heart also pumps its deoxygenated blood into the systemic circulation not pumps uh, it mixes its oxygenated blood deoxygenated blood with oxygen oxygenated blood so this mixing of deoxygenated blood with oxygenated blood caused by physiologic shunt is called venous admixture and that specific amount of venous admixture is wasted blood as nothing can be absorbed from that so it is called wasted blood similarly i would like to say that there is also called physiologic dead space where the air is ventilated but there is not well perfused means there is no uh, proper blood flow means not perfusion where uh, that ventilated air can be used that is known as considered waste wasted air so where there is not proper nutrients or oxygen where it cannot be absorbed there it, it, it is wasted blood and where air cannot be absorbed properly means uh, not utilized it is wasted air now let's continue with the characteristic features of the lung it like pulmonary artery are like thin wall remember that pulmonary artery thin wall and the pulmonary blood vessel are highly elastic because of highly elasticness it can accumulate more amount of blood and are thin wall why thin wall so that it can uh, get better perfusion better ventilation perfusion is maintained I, oh, also th- i would like to that because if there is more and more incli- increased in pressure because of that uh, as the alveolar pulmonary artery are thin and also the alveolar layer is also thin so if the pressure is too much high the bl- fluid leaks from those spaces causing pulmonary edema so the smooth muscle coat is not well developed so pulmonary capillaries is more in number than systemic capillaries smooth muscle coat not well developed also the pulmonary capillaries are more in number so and uh, then systemic capillaries and also there are more anastomoses also vascular resistance is less which is one tenth of the systemic pulmonary sy- system is also low pressure also i would like to add one thing that uh, most of the blood is stored means not stored uh, it is maximum in the body like more amount of blood is present in the pulmonary circulation it's in the lungs um, about like uh, compared to the whole body more amount of blood is present in the lungs only then as i would like to discuss further the pulmonary arterial pressure so in the pulmonary artery pressure the systolic is 25 mhg diastolic 10 mhg i uh, show you in the diagram here it's like from blood growing going from here it is 25 by 8 it's systolic and this is diastolic and uh, here it is 7 mm hg it is 7 the 7 mm hg is this one pressure the pulmonary capillary pressure which is uh, where the gases exchange takes place the pressure of course is low so that better exchange takes place if the pressure would be high the blood would be flowing with more speed and there would be not enough time for proper gases exchange also now let's continue with the regulation of blood flow so the regulation of blood flow depends on the five types five characteristics the first one is cardiac output and pulmonary blood flow is directly proportional to cardiac output and cardiac output depends on venous return of course if the venous return would be high there would be more, more venous return means uh, more blood to pulmonary circulation means more blood get oxygenated force of contraction there would there would be more force of contraction there would be more blood going more rapidly rate of contraction if the heart rate would be more 
of course if the peripheral resistance this is the thing you must remember peripheral resistance if the peripheral resistance would be more then also the blood flow to the heart blood flow to the lungs is altered and vascular resistance second point after cardiac output vascular resistance so vascular resistance is inversely proportional to the pulmonary vascular resistance as we know that the pulmonary vascular resistance is less than systemic resistance of course uh, if would be more resistance then the blood capillary would be in the pressure or gases exchange might not not take place better so as you can see here i have drawn a little diagram explaining that situation vascular resistance that pvr is less than systemic resistance during inspiration pvr decreases as decrease in thoracic pressure hence vessels distend i let that i explain you like when a person inspires his lung would expand of course as we know that and lung is an elastic tissue so when an elastic tissue is see here there is a vessel and around that there is elastic tissue i have shown here so when a lung expand this elastic tissue would go this direction and the vessel have more cross section area so pvr decrease resistance decreased similarly when the lung is collapsed as it is elastic tissue it loves to gets back to its original position so when a lung is collapsed it puts more pressure on the vessel so the cross section of the vessel is reduced thus during expiration pvr is increased as simple as that the third one is nervous factor nervous factor uh, sympathetic stimulation causes vasoconstriction which causes increase in pulmonary vascular resistance similarly parasympathetic stimulation decreases vasodilation uh, sorry causes vasodilation which causes decrease in pvr chemical factor it is seen that excess co2 and decrease in o2 causes vasoconstriction perfect like true mechanism of it is yet unknown but it is believed that uh, maybe because of hypoxic situation like a hypoxic situation the brain acts uh, in sir certain manner causing vasoconstriction also fifth thing is gravity and hydrostatic pressure so when a person is standing in upright or standing position the blood pressure in the lower extremity is higher than upper extremity because of gravitational pull uh, similarly in the lung it is divided into three zone 1 2 and 3 in zone 1 it is called area of zero sp- zero blood flow why i will let you explain so in zone 1 the pulmonary capillary pressure is equals to alveolar pressure so the there is sufficient blood flow means uh, in that situation the blood flow in in blood flow in the lungs would be just sufficient but the pulmonary artery pressure is sufficient for the blood flow into the alveolar capillaries but if uh, the pressure here if the pressure in the capillary is reduced then of course that would be collapse situation it means a capillary would collapse because of reduced pressure there must be a proper amount of pressure that maintains the capillary to keep it open if it won't be enough pressure then the capillaries would collapse and the ventilation perfusion ratio increases means there would be air but there would not be blood to use that air if or if the pressure alveolar pressure increases then if the alveolar pressure increases then the alveoli also gets larger and because alveoli getting larger the vessel is compressed and because of that also vest ventilation perfusion ratio increase because there is more air but uh, there is not blood flow from there to get that air utilize so and also there i would like to add one thing that uh, in the lungs normal resting person the vessel only some lower area of the lung uh, the capillaries are utilized as gravitational pull only lower area of the lung 
has maximum utilization of the capillaries the apical and the middle or intermittent area of the lung there would be minimal blood minimal capillaries which are being used in upper area it is minim minim maximally it is not used only in upper area there is zero blood flow uh, because and when there is more blood or like a uh, pressure increases then all of the capillaries are comes into like are utilized they are recruited means i, sh I should use a word recruited that when more more capillaries are recruited there is more microcirculation means more blood flow means uh, it can accommodate maximum amount of blood or yeah maximum amount of blood can be accumulated by all of those if all three areas if all three areas are utilized then of course maximum amount of blood flow would be there and maximum amount of oxygenation can be possible when there is increase in pressure yeah, either in resting stage only like these things are used this two this is medium this is maximally used this is minim minimal so in zone 2 the alveolar pressure is less during systole and alveolar pressure is more during diastole why because uh, during systole the pressure is of course high so as due to high pressure it is more than alveolar pressure so the ventilation perfusion ratio is normal it is maintained means during systole it is more during diastole it is less so and in zone 3 the pulmonary arterial pressure is greater than alveolar pressure of course because the gravity because of the gravitational pull the all the blood would be going through the lower zone and hence the pulmonary arterial pressure would be high so during systole and diastole there is continuous blood flow in the third zone this zone continuous blood flow as due to gravitational pull, blood directly comes here only and the ventilation perfusion ratio is decreased decrease it is not bad thing because the most of the air which is coming into the lung most of the air which is coming into the lung all of it is utilized all it is utilized so ventilation perfusion ratio decreases that's all for today guys see you in the next class and please guys do